Mel Gibson's statements during an interview about the dark side of Hollywood have resurfaced on the internet following the release of the movie Sound of Freedom. Gibson, a known supporter of the film, took to social media to promote it and encourage people to watch it. As the movie hit theaters, a 1998 interview featuring Gibson expressing his shock at the reality of Hollywood has gone viral. The release of Sound of Freedom has been quite chaotic, with moviegoers sharing their alleged experiences online, claiming that people were being forcefully removed from their seats for various reasons, and that theaters deliberately turned off the air conditioning. Although Gibson doesn't explicitly touch upon the specific themes of Sound of Freedom in the interview, movie producer and host of the slightly offensive podcast, Elijah Schaefer, connected the perceived dots between the two in a tweet he shared last Sunday. Shocking, he starts off dramatically, setting the stage for his revelation. Mel Gibson, Sound of Freedom, is the real deal. Warned about the evils of Hollywood in 1998. Predicted how they'd turn on him. Alludes to actors being actual demons. He knows something very dark and wants to expose it. The seriousness in his voice is chilling, Schaefer wrote. In his tweets, Schaefer cleverly includes Sound of Freedom in parentheses after mentioning Mel Gibson, implying a connection between the actor and the film. However, it appears that Gibson's involvement is limited to promoting the movie on social media, and he is not believed to have any direct involvement in its production. The video shared in the tweet is an edited version of a 1998 episode of Hollywood Conversations, where British filmmaker Mike Figgis engages in a conversation with Mel Gibson. The original program lasted 24 minutes, but for Twitter's sake, it was condensed to a mere 3 minutes and 10 seconds. So far, the tweet has amassed an impressive 2.7 million views. Gibson begins by explaining how he had weird paranoid suspicions about Hollywood when he first arrived. He admits doubting himself, thinking his thoughts were crazy and mere paranoia. He questions whether his assumptions about people's odd behavior were valid. And then, you find out later down the track that you were exactly on track with a lot of this stuff, he reveals with a shocked expression. That some of your worst nightmares were real at the time, and you think, it does rip your life to pieces if you let it. It's always pounding at the walls, these little guys, these little heathens with no soul downstairs with horns on their head, Gibson adds. He then delves into the topic of betrayal in Hollywood, using a vivid metaphor of a knife piercing his back to illustrate his expectations. Gibson then described a rooftop meeting in New York with Chris Walken. He floated in sideways, like one of those old vampire movies where they don't walk, but they glide. The air got cold, and it was getting scary. I turned around to avoid his steady gaze at one point, and I was looking at the building with the top of the sixes on it, so, there was a huge illuminated triple six in red. At first, it's unclear whom he is referring to, until he concludes the story by exclaiming, Oh no, Chris Walken is the Antichrist. The Twitter video concludes with a snippet of Gibson discussing the need for cockroach resilience to survive in the town. Snopes, the website, has shared a complete transcript of the entire Hollywood Conversation episode, providing crucial context for some of the quotes from Gibson that were featured in the viral tweet. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. While we're talking about the world of celebrities, the one I sign has been everywhere this past month. And, like always, it's being done by famous stars who are willing to do whatever it takes to maintain their fame. Vogue really went all out with symbolism and propaganda. Bella Ramsey, wearing an ironic crown to represent her enslavement, was seen doing the one I sign. Brian Cranston, not wanting his career to come to an end, had to flash the one I sign in GQ magazine. In another photo, Cranston once again made the one eye sign. It's clear that this gesture is not a random occurrence. English singer Georgia Smith, eager to keep her career going, made sure to incorporate the one eye sign on the cover of ID magazine. 
If you think you can avoid this symbolism by staying away from mainstream media, well, I guess you'll have to avoid going outside altogether now. Someone from Italy shared this Swarovski billboard in Milan, featuring a model hiding one eye with a butterfly. It doesn't get more occult elite than that. Disney and Pixar are currently facing difficulties because everything they produce is filled with an agenda that everyone despises. The main character of the upcoming Pixar movie, Elio, is essentially a walking, talking embodiment of the one eye sign. Based on the trailer, the movie will also contain some irritating woke messages. Check out this ad promoting Kesha's new tour. Take a look at her expression. She seems pretty unhappy while making a clear one-eye sign. And the name gag order is quite revealing. It supposedly refers to her being silenced about her case against producer Dr. Luke, who allegedly mistreated her. Furthermore, the name might carry a sexual connotation, if you catch my drift. In other words, it appears that she's still under the control of the industry. Mabel Cadena, a Mexican actress best known for her role in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, was recently featured on the cover of Vogue Mexico. And guess what? She's throwing up the one-eye sign with a snake. Not only that, but she also repeats the one-eye sign multiple times in the photo shoot to emphasize her status as an industry pawn. Jennifer Coolidge is really determined to keep her career going. That's why she's trying to be oh so clever by incorporating the one-eye sign using a veil. Such creativity right. In another picture from the same photo shoot, Coolidge is sporting horns on her head because, you know, Satanism and all that. Speaking of Satanism, it seems like it's gradually becoming the only religion allowed in mass media. Now, let's take a look at rapper Lil Uzi Vert on the cover of 032C magazine. As we've discussed in previous videos about him, this rapper, whose name is pronounced Lil Lucifer, is basically a manufactured artist, used to bring outright Satanism into rap and black culture in general. On this cover, he has an inverted cross on his forehead. And to top it off, there's blood around his mouth, suggesting some kind of blood ritual. Speaking of blood rituals, here's another example of an industry setup. Check out the cover of Doha Cat's latest single. She's completely <laughs> and covered in blood. The inverted triangle positioned over her body resembles a cup filled with blood. And to make it even more obvious, the caption on her Instagram post, written by Doha, or her social media team, says, let's begin, with a blood droplet. It can't get any more blatant than that. Even the world of gaming isn't exempt from overt satanic themes. Take a look at this ad for Diablo 4 in New York City. The game was released on June 6, 23, anyway, 2 multiplied by 3, equals 6. The ad boldly states, Welcome to Hell, New York, featuring a demonic creature named Lilith overlooking the city. Interestingly, the skies over New York City turned an eerie red, due to smog from Canadian forest fires. Satanism is also finding its way into schools through incredibly deceptive means. At precisely 6 p.m. on the sixth day of the sixth month, 666, both branches of the Saline County Library System received copies of a satanic picture book. The book is titled, The Satanic Temple Presence, Goodnight Baphomet. In short, this book is nothing more than garbage. <laughs> now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.